Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more The Rights of the Horde in European Results 4. It's been a number of days since I played last. Um, I've made some, made some changes here to the interface. I decided that I didn't really like the better UI mod. It's just too blocky and it doesn't look nearly as clean as this, uh, this Stellaris font. I, I absolutely adore the Stellaris font in pretty much every every Paradox game that I've, I've tried it in. It just, it's to me, it's very clean, concise and, and legible. The one thing I would like for it to be maybe is just a tiny bit larger, but I feel like this is a vast improvement over vanilla. Um, yeah, so, yeah, anyway. Let's just dive right back in. Mm hmm. So how are things going? Well, we're a great power still. We are in seventh place. We're doing okay-ish. We're above Castile in, in overall great power rank. We actually have, you know, 50% more development already than he does. We're also about 50%, uh, eh, about a, maybe a 33% larger in development over England. 45, 40, 44 or so development above Austria, so that's decent. However, um, kind of concerning here that uh, we're like eight years away from the next institution forming, which is going to be a little bit tricky for us. And we need to make a continuous beeline here for this coast. Also, definitely do want to take some some time here to try to get, get Persia into a good position. Uh, if we don't actually try to get their disloyalty uh, their uh their modifiers squared away then it is true we, we will never be able to integrate them with this liberty desire so i do think i'm going to start spending some prestige i did a little bit of a little quick mental math here because we're great power and we're a patron of the arts the the quick and easy way to figure out exactly where your your prestige is going to trend if you have these decay modifiers is uh normal decay is five percent base right and we have two things that reduce it by by one percent each so our base decay is three percent per Per tick. Notice how we're at a 90 prestige right now, so we're losing 2.7, which is 90% of our, our default annual tick. So, the quick easy math is you just take, um, we have plus 1.45, so 1.45 out of 3. Takes us to 48.33 prestige. That's what we're going to trend toward. So we have less than 48.3 prestige, we're going to trend up. If we have more than 48.3, we're going to trend down. So, we can definitely start spending some prestige here. Um, I would like, possibly, to keep our prestige nice and high for this institution embracement cost if we are going to to click that button soon um it's not big enough yet but soon soon we may um so we'll see anyway let's go ahead and speed three dive back into this war here we're trying to take over uzbek and uh deal with these bastards ottomans wish to inform us that they no longer think we are relevant to their interests and they've therefore canceled their subsidy that's not good because uh they were one of the primary reasons why i was not losing money Oh, that's what happens on occasion when you, uh, you know, oh, I don't know, reload the game. Anyway, Uzbek has uh, just ceded some land. They've ceded one, two, three provinces to the Timurids. They've paid them more reps, 90 ducats, etc., etc. So the Timurids have just conquered a little bit of territory. Timurids should still hopefully be friendly. Nope, never mind. They've decided suddenly that they're quite hostile once your province is negative 200. So despite, you know, 50 some years of peace and uh, being friends and schmoozing and, and having drinks together, now they've decided no, no, not going to happen. Anyway, who are we still friends with? We are friends with uh, Ottomans, Nogai, Theodoro, Persia, Nizhny Novgorod. Okay, um, looks like we got a new province down here we need to siege down. That is a nine development province over there as well. Uh, let's see, can we access it? Yes, we can. Do what we can here to try to keep these guys in order. The tribes are being rather annoying. Charity for the poor. Gain piety, lose ducats, lose piety, lose prestige. Our prestige right now, or our piety rather, is at 36. The piety would be useful, because I am thinking about trying to get caught up here a little bit on the religious unity. There was an interesting discussion going on in the subreddit about uh, my, my decision to take innovative ideas first. I am a sucker for innovative, I'll admit. Um, but there was a, a guy who had actually kind of shown some of the stuff that he had done as the Golden Horde and uh, led with Humanist. Humanist is great. I mean, it really is. I mean... Every single time I go big in an EU4 campaign, I end up with Humanist at some point or another. Uh, the decision is whether you go for Humanist, Administrative, or, in my case, Innovative first. Every, you know, every All the other ones aren't really particularly appealing to me, although religious, religious can be quite nice. But you don't really need it as a horde, because you've got your horde CB. But um, Humanist idea is this, this religious unity, basically, we would be at 100% right now. That means that there's really no issue. Uh, that's fine. This basically means uh, negative 15 years of separatism between our government type plus this negative 10. So basically no issues with um, rebels at all. Max promoted cultures is, is fine. I don't really plan on paying the, the cost. This allows you to have more aggressive expansion. This allows you to conquer more. This allows you to eventually save a whole bunch of points on future ideas. So all kinds of different ways that it's really good. But, um, but anyway, 
We're gonna continue to gain piety so we can try to convert things. So unfortunately, we have to take out some loans. Uh, we'll go ahead and out and just take out one manually because I want to, I don't know, stay on top of it. We're not gonna be building any buildings, thank you. We're still over the relationship limit. We've engaged in glorious combat. Alright. <clears throat> Some of these fonts seem incredibly small now, though. I'll admit, compared to we, the uh, the size that I was using in the previous iteration of my mod pack. Uh, I feel like probably not a bad idea just to top off relations with the, the Ottomans, because, you know, it's the Ottomans. In the meantime, uh, one other thing I need to get my bearings on here is our truce timers here. Knights, Laka, Venice. So, Knights in 94. It's probably from a previous war that we were in with uh, the Ottomans calling us in. Genoa is no longer part of the Empire, which is great. They are allied to France, however. I'm assuming France would defend them, but France would not be able to actually get over here quite easily. Um, they are also in a trade league with Ulm, Parma, and Switzerland. So that is something to consider. We have a truce with them until when now? Until 97? It's quite a, late, quite a ways off. Getting a hold of some of this ter territory here could be nice. Wars and stuff there. Nine development here. Are these two estuaries or is it a... Yeah, it's the trading post. Wouldn't mind having a claim here. We have a spare diplomat right now. Go ahead and do that for a bit. Alright, so we took out one of these guys here. Um, I'm pretty sure there were more tribes out there. We've got 21 war score right now. We don't actually occupy the capital. That's the main thing that I want to get started on right away. We're going to go, I think, I think we're going to go for like full annexation here, if I remember correctly. 139% basically all the northern provinces except for one? Did it actually remember my, uh... Your trait has been gained. A hard-earned battle has learned, has, has given our, our our general land fire damage plus 10%. Alright, fair enough. Okay. Trying to help our vassal out a little bit, but it's not going to make him like us enough. That's for sure. 50 months now on our conversions, that's not too bad. Our mission right now is no current mission. You'll have to bear with me here. I've been playing other games quite extensively here. And diving back into E4. Just a little bit of a little bit of effort. I, I seem to recall spreading out too much in the near in the recent past. So I'm a little bit concerned here about the uh, the tribe stacks that I know are out there. But at the same time, I, I feel pretty greedy. Life of a Step Warrior is quite nice. The Giannagars declared a war. Good for them. Alright, let's see if this thing has saved my peace deal from previous play session. Looks like no. Sweet. Alright, well, if I remember correctly, I was looking at something like this-ish. Maybe we weren't going to take Tumen. Someone had actually said that, um... The tribal CB gives reduced aggressive expansion for border provinces, but not as much for non-bordering provinces. And I want to test that theory real quick. Here we've got uh, 8 development, 9 development. So if that's true, then the aggressive expansion for these two should be about the same. We get 3.6 for this province, and 7.7. 3.6 times 2 would be 7.2. 7 7 Extra 0. 0.5 because of the dis disparity in... Uh, in development. So 3.6, 7.7. We're getting 4.1. About 0.45 aggressive expansion per. And I think that the math there is actually that because of our, our prestige here, reducing aggressive expansion impact by 9%, we're getting reduced from 0.5 aggressive expansion per development times 0.9 is 0.45. I think that's exactly right. So each each development's 0.5 aggressive expansion base. And uh, we've got a prestige impact there. And then I thought our government type also reduced aggressive expansion. 
didn't it? Or was it that was that part of the CB? Yeah, 75% reduced aggressive expansion. So perhaps perhaps it's not 0.5 each. Perhaps it's actually uh, 0.5 times divided by 0.75. Maybe like 0.66? I don't know. Whatever it is, it, it seems to be uh, the same. I don't think that we're actually getting a discount um, on border provinces. And I know for sure that you don't get a discount uh, for provinces that you have claims to. Not like you used to. So... I think our goal is definitely going to be to take as much territory as we possibly can. And, uh, nine development down here. Uh, well, in particular, actually, if I remember correctly, I wanted provinces that I can raise is the real thing here. So these three de three war score cost provinces, these are going to be three development. We don't want those. Let's see if we can only take provinces that actually have a little bit extra. At Atilkdik. Wouldn't mind taking that. And we might have a little bit more room once we actually get some of these occupied. So let's go ahead and get a few more occupations taken care of here. He does have two troops, and I'm actually, surprisingly... Ooh, Mongolia's declared independence against, uh... Against the Oirat. That's kind of surprising. I'm actually not seeing traps. I wonder if they're all congregated up here in Agan, or if they are... somehow not still around. If so, that's kind of weird. Interesting, but weird. Hmm. Oh, well, we're going to find out in a second, I guess. A little bit of extra attrition is kind of unnecessary here. Let's go down to, uh, four troops. Ideally, we want to siege down the provinces that have just three developments, since I'm not going to be able to raise them. No siege value here, right? I think so. Uzbek has just gone bankrupt. Well, that's going to make them pretty easy. <laughs> Granted, the bankruptcy is only going to last 10 years, and we're going to have a 15-year truce, but... Yeah, looks like the uh, those guys have actually disappeared. Genoa has now fabricated claims on me. Uh, I guess good for them. Cheers. That would be a three-development province down there. Again, no real issue. Ooh, we lost military access. Interesting. We're not going to be able to conquer that anyway. Not, not that we would even want to, since it's the three development. All right, we're 70%. If I... I cannot make it into a core, so I can't even demand it. Hmm. Yeah. That's not true. I mean, I could totally core off of no guy, but... Sure. Sure game. I, I can't core it. That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whatever you say. Let's just say I believe you. So I did do a little bit of calculator stuff and uh, determined. Oh, it's unfortunate. It was big pretenders. Are you serious? Um, I actually did a, a, a spreadsheet, right, to, to figure the actual overall amount of attrition and like loss of life that you would experience if you have a disease outbreak, and it extends the duration that you have to siege by X number of months because you're waiting for your minimalistic stack to um, to recover. And it turns out that the number is uh, pretty, pretty damn in favor of always have one extra troop to guarantee that you don't have any reduced uh, siege efficiency. For, for a couple primary reasons. Number one is that you just lose far more men um, due to attrition over time if you extend it. Basically, let's say you have a, a siege in place and you have no actual um, general there, right? Your your maximum morale or your maximum reinforcement rate is going to be 50% um, of the 10% per month because you're in hostile territory. So that means that the most you can recover will be 5% of your troops. If you suffer a disease outbreak and you're suffering 1% due to normal attrition, possibly 2 or 3% due to winter, or maybe an extra 1% due to defensive ideas or something, let's just say on average maybe 2% is your standard attri attrition from sieging. And that means that you can only recover 5% of your men, but 2% get killed due to attrition, so you're going to recover 3% every tick. 
A uh, disease outbreak then is going to take you a minimum of two months to recover from. That's two extra ticks on every single army, and it definitely does make a lot more sense. Just avoid that, right? House of Shay Bandit, the Union of Muhammad and Ip 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 Ibtim. We've gained not only a spouse, but also a new ally in the realm. All right, cool. So, uh, Astrakhan is the city of the family of our new Kanem. Kanem. This province will be less likely to revolt, but will be granted privileges, making it harder to tax or convert. Astrakhan gets seat of strong aristocrats to the end of the game. Uh, hopefully it's the right religion. It is. Good. Okay. I mean, we're Sunni, right? I think we are. Yeah, of course we are. All right, so we got Syed, this guy. Cool. And Ipitz, the 214 heir, or, uh, woman. The woman! You know who I'm talking about. 13 ducats a month in expenses right now. Not ideal. And these pretenders are going to probably want to move toward the capital. The Honest Merchants of the Golden Horde. Global Trade Power plus 10%. Hmm. They did not actually move toward the capital. Interesting. So yeah, anyway, in my head at least I've kind of resigned myself to just always siege with, uh, you know, capital fort takes four, it takes four troops, it doesn't take, it doesn't take three. Uh, level one fort takes seven troops, not six, that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, I, I didn't even finish my train of thought, right? So not only is uh, it usually more cost effective in that way, but it's also significantly more cost effective because it can speed up the sieges of your wars. Like if you, let's just say that you save, I don't know, two months or six months due to multiple disease outbreaks, because naturally you're going to get way more than one, right? Um, if that's the case, naturally, of course, of course you have more more issues. Then, uh, if that's the case, then you're going to end up with um, four more months that you have to have your entire army at full at, at um, max max morale, which is incredibly expensive. So. Alright, we have everything occupied. We've got 88% right now. Let's sort by overextension, see what other juicy provinces we can get. We cannot, cannot take that one, it would cost too much. So at this point, do we actually want to take these three development provinces knowing we can't raise them? I'm thinking pr pr probably. Yeah, probably. I'm going to shelter them from anyone else being able to take them. Beyond that, can I get a little bit of money? I'll take the 56 ducats, I don't even really care. Okay, we're gonna need 17, some prestige. We're gonna lose, we're gonna get a little bit of inflation, it happens. Let's go ahead and uh, interact with our, our estate. Or rather our, our Persia. Go ahead and placate those local rulers here. And then we will take our peace deal. Okay, how expensive of a war was this? Well, it's 21,600 some manpower, so not 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 cheap. Uzbek lost absolutely nothing, because they had absolutely nothing. And uh, we've gained quite a bit of land. Uzbek has just changed their capital. Um, interesting. Okay, fair enough. Okay, let's go ahead. We know that pretty much every province can be raised, so... Go ahead and grab our troops together up to here. And, uh... Hopefully this army can just get out of here soon. Nice nice roll, but we don't really want to be involved in this fight. I still feel like you should be able to issue commands. I, I, I know, I know you're shattering, right? But let me just tell you to go somewhere after you're done, please. Oirats wants to hire some Kondatiare. Well, he's in the midst of his war to maintain Mongolian... Uh, vassalage, but uh, he doesn't look like he's doing too well. Boy Rider on tech 6, they're fighting against Ming on tech 8. Ming is horrendously terrifying, naturally. Uh, we're at 70% overextension right now. This province has 3%. We can start coring this one right away. Let's see. Was I... I think I was planning on selling this land to no guy, paying the diplo points, and we'll, we'll have him core. He's got... We're going to finish integrating him in 96. So we got four years. He should be able to core some of this land. Maybe not all of it, but some of it. Worst case scenario, if he doesn't core it, I will end up paying the Dipple points for the land, and then I'll still have to pay the admin points for the land, which is bad. 
But if he cores some of it as he goes, it's gonna extend the the time that this thing goes on, and uh, I think we'll probably come out ahead that way. Plus, we're a little bit behind on admin tech. Not to mention, I've got one more idea to fill in. So, let's go ahead and raise things. There was nothing to raise there, and this one I can't actually raise until after we put down this Uzbek Pretenders Rebellion. Let's go take care of that real quick. New CB against him. And he's decided to leave right after I'm almost there. Yay. Didn't even finish the siege, just like, oh, I guess we should leave, huh? We don't belong here anymore, do we? We could take this tech. Uh, unless we actually get into a position where we need to, I'm not going to take it. I don't think we will. I just desperately want to uh, finish this this process here. Let's go ahead and do this raise. Um, I think we want to probably try to knock out that last idea in a month or so, February. Which means that we can get rid of this land right now. Here's the thing, is that, uh, I really don't care if if he gets no money from it, because I'm not going to get that money. I don't really want him to particularly be too strong. So I think we might raise autonomy in all this territory, lower the unrest. Because when we actually integrate it, it's going to be set to 60% anyway. Like 90% sure it'll be set to 60%. If it's above 60%, Still think it's get it gets set to sixty percent upon integration. Let's go ahead and in, uh, just raise autonomy. And every one of these ones that we're allowed to. Do I want to attack the Oirat? If I do, I should keep a border with them. Hmm. I know I want to attack Muscovy. We have no truce with Muscovy right now, so I mean, there's that. How many favors do we have with the Ottomans right now? 22 favors. Distant war. Not really that distant. I mean, come on, man. Because you don't have military access, you're going to say it's distant war? Hmm. I mean, it's just like, you could just walk right through my land up there. I mean, come on, man. Um, it's either that or we attack Poland, which I'm assuming that they would help out with that war. I think we have enough going on to the west. We don't necessarily need to worry about attacking east. But then again, having a wall here to block me off is rather unfortunate. It's going to last like five years. But then again, in like five to seven years, we're probably going to finish the integration of Nogai while we do these other wars. All right, I'm going to take a break here and think about it a little bit between episodes. But um, we'll be back in a little bit. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you again soon.